We have a lot to go through tonight. Um, we have a new group of bachelorette hopefuls, a new richest man in the world. But before all that, I feel like we have no choice but to review the contents of a new book about Donald Trump. You remember that guy? Okay, so today uh, we got a fresh batch of inside stuff, way inside stuff, from Stephanie Grisham, who served as Trump's White House press secretary and Melania's chief of staff. She was on the inside from day one. She's got a book. It's called I'll Take Your Questions Now. And you're not going to believe this. Turns out this Trump character is a real nut. He's a real... <laughs> According to Stephanie Grisham, first of all, he cuts his own hair with a giant pair of scissors, which is by far the least shocking revelation of all of them. But let's just run through them. Grisham says that during the G20 summit in 2019, Trump told Vladimir Putin before their meeting, he said, OK, I'm going to act a little tougher with you for a few minutes, but it's for the cameras. After they leave, we'll talk, you understand. Which is, this is not something a president says to a, another world leader, especially Vladimir Putin. This is something Hulk Hogan would say to Andre the Giant before WrestleMania. And when all that uh, Stormy Daniels stuff came out, Grisham says Trump called her from Air Force One specifically to let her know his penis was not small or toadstool-shaped. <laughs> Which is basically confirmation that his penis is small and toadstool-shaped. <laughs> Can you imagine... Thanks for letting me know, Mr. President. <laughs> Grisham also detailed the length staffers would go to mitigate his, his temper tantrums. He said the White House had a guy they called the music man. It turns out this guy happened to be her boyfriend at the time, who would play Trump's favorite show tunes to calm him down. <laughs> I love it. The president is furious. Someone get his Cheetah Rivera CD fast. <laughs> and one of the songs they would play to cool Trump down was Memory from Cats. <laughs> of course, that's Trump's favorite show. It's the, from the only musical that grabs you by the pussy, Cats. <laughs> and it's... Grisham, Stephanie Grisham, who sat and quietly watched all this lunacy go down, admits she should have spoken up more. More, in the nine months she was press secretary, she didn't hold a single press conference. She should have spoken up once. That would have been more than... Not, and by the way, it's not just her. No one spoke up. All these so-called adults in the room, as they like to call themselves. If the president is snorting Adderall and throwing fried chicken at foreign <laughs> leaders... Maybe don't wait three years to put it in a book, but this is the funniest bombshell. You remember back um, a couple years ago, Trump took that mysterious trip to Walter Reed Hospital and people were thinking maybe he had a heart attack or a stroke or something? It was neither of those things. He went to the hospital to have a colonoscopy. And he had it without anesthesia for two reasons. Number one, because he didn't want to give power to Mike Pence, even for a short time, for real. And number two, he didn't want to be the butt of a joke on late night TV, which <laughs> I have to say, it gives me a lot of satisfaction as a late night talk show host to know that he opted to stay awake while they augured his innards with a sewer snake, <laughs> specifically because he didn't want us making fun of him. I, I feel good, and I also feel cheated because when a president, especially this president, gets a colonoscopy, it is my duty, that's right, duty, to make jokes about it. And, So to make up for what I'm contractually and ethically obligated to deliver to you, it's time for some Trump colonoscopy jokes. They're a few years old, but I think you're going to like them. All right. Here we go. Jonathan, I'm going to need you. The uh, uh, president went to Walter Reed Hospital for a colonoscopy today. Uh, it took a while because the doctor kept accidentally sticking the camera in his mouth. <laughs> you know, as soon as they... As soon as they switched the camera on, Trump turned around and said, hey, Doc, how are the ratings? Thank you. The president's doctor decided to schedule this procedure after the White House toilet killed itself. <laughs> it was a good thing Trump had this done because they found two cancerous polyps were removed immediately. The doctor said the hardest thing about giving Trump a colonoscopy was getting the camera around Mike Pence's nose. But Trump thought it went great overall. He got a, he got a perfect report. Uh, afterwards, the whole medical team kept saying, wow, what an unbelievable <laughs> Thank you. That's not good, but you know what? He gave us a colonoscopy for like four years. It's time we gave one back. Today, by the way, is National Voter Registration Day. California, as of yesterday, is a vote-by-mail state, which means all voters here get a ballot mailed to them at their house, whether they request it or not. Republicans oppose this. They're concerned that if states send ballots to all eligible voters, those voters might 
vote, which could be a disaster. <laughs> Guillermo, you watched that football game last night? Of course. I Dallas. know you're a dad. Guillermo's a big Dallas Cowboys fan. The Cowboys won. They beat Philadelphia. And after the game, um, the quarterback for the Eagles, Jalen Hurts, put the loss and moving on from the loss in perspective using terms I've not heard from a professional athlete before. I'm going to learn from it. And I'm going to learn from it. We're going to be a better team from it. I believe that. Um, I truly believe that, you know. You take you a deuce, you don't, you don't sit there and look at it. You flush it and move on. We're gonna flush it and move on. Well, speak for yourself, my friend. But by the way, imagine losing a game, getting crushed, really, by your arch rival. You head back to the shower, you put on a turtleneck, a beautiful pink sports jacket with a rose in the lapel. <laughs> That's a lot of panache. This is, this is good, too. One of the unexpected delights of the NFL season has been watching Eli and Peyton Manning call the games on Monday nights on ESPN2. So last night, Eli shared a colorful anecdote about playing in Philly, where the fans are very tough. They may have been a bit too colorful. You go to Philly, I mean, you're getting the double bird right away from a nine-year-old <laughs> kid. I would give the bird. I don't know, can we do that? Or can you, I'm sure you can, you can blur that out, right? All right, all right, sorry. Uh, earlier, I gave the, uh, the double bird. I guess that's frowned upon, so I apologize if I offended anybody. I thought I was just, that's what a nine-year-old did to me. I thought I could, I could do it back. Well, two wrongs don't make a right, Eli. You know that. For those of you who do not watch football on Mondays, you might be interested to know that we uh, now have the identity of the 30 men who will compete for the chance to become Bachelorette Michelle's future former fiance. ABC unveiled the cast for a new season of The Bachelorette. The contestants uh, represent really every kind of American man, from wellness coach to yoga teacher to wellness coach. But this year, they're, they're being conservative this year. They whittled it down to only two Brandons, who, as you can see, are doing the exact same pose, which is so Brandon. The bios for them, you know, they put out little biographies for the guys, and some of them are confusing. This one stood out to me in particular. Chris G is a motivational speaker from Canada. He loves escape rooms and performs spoken word poetry. To me, any room where spoken word poetry is being performed is an escape room. But Chris G also has two cats, one named Cat and one named Small Cat. Honestly, I hope he wins just so we can find out what they named the kids. You know, as usual, many of the guys have similar professions. And with that said, it's time to play medical sales rep or personal trainer. It's a really, it's an easy game. I'll show you one of the contestants. You guess whether the man is a medical sales rep or a personal trainer. You got it? Guillermo, you have it? I got it. All right, here we go. Uh, number one, medical sales rep or personal trainer? Personal trainer. Oh, we have a split, and it is medical sales rep. <laughs> Next, medical sales rep or personal trainer? Personal trainer. You say personal trainer, they say yes, correct. Very good. <laughs> medical sales rep or personal trainer? <laughs> and he is a medical sales rep. <laughs> medical sales rep or personal trainer? Personal trainer. Yeah, has to be a personal trainer, that'd be great. And I believe we have one more, medical sales rep or personal trainer? Medical sales rep. The audience says medical sales rep. He says, what? <laughs> what the hell is he doing? <laughs> Don't these nerds get rejected enough in real life? <laughs> Elon Musk is now the world's richest person again, according to Forbes. Anyway, the richest part has been uh, verified. The person part has not. He is reported to be worth more than $200 billion. Elon Musk has more money than Greece. The country, not the musical. The musical, too, though. He has more money than both of them. The news comes only days after he split with the mother of his child, the musician Grimes, who is now his SpaceX. And somebody go, oh? <laughs> well, congratulations to Elon Musk. He beats out Jeff Bezos. You know, the Bible says it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So now Elon is uh, working on shrinking camels. Did you know that? <laughs> Speaking of the Bible, Tucker Carlson worked himself into a real lather last night over a, a COVID-themed nativity scene. You can pick up this masked nativity scene online. It looks conventional, but look closely. It features Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus 
all with their faces covered, as they should be even in a manger. They're masked, just like you are. <laughs> I guess it was a slow outrage day. I don't know. There, maybe there were no gay superheroes for Tucker to scream about, but warranted or not, he was fired up, and it got angrier and more preposterous from there. For just 15 bucks on Etsy, you can buy a patron saint of staying home prayer candle. That's a real thing. We read the reviews today. Here's one of them. Love it! Exclamation point. I think I may have to set up a little altar to place it on. Another exclamation point. There's a new convert. Here's another review from a woman called Kelly Hannon. Quote, I put this in my office. I work in public health, and this makes me smile every time I look at it. Of course it makes you smile, Kathy Hannon. Virtue is its own reward. <laughs> so, it's like this is some kind of anti-Jesus uprising happening on Etsy. <laughs> The fact, by the way, these candles with the famous people on them have been around for years. You could get uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy, there's a Eugene Levy, Judge Judy, Keith Urban, Lizzo, the Golden Girls. There's even one of me. And by the way, Tucker, if you... If you were to continue and search your own name on Etsy, you would find this product, a uh, Tucker Carlson is a douchebag shirt. 4.9 stars, by the way, congratulations. It's interesting to hear these guys talk about COVID as if everything they said about it hasn't been wrong since day one, but that's how it goes, I guess. And so to remind us of who said what, every week we take a look back at what was in the news a year ago. And with that said, it's time once again for This Week in COVID History. This Week in COVID History. As we end September 2020, the men who would be president have a get to know ya. You have to provide them to plastic Nancy Pelosi. By, the by the media, media by our allies, by the world. Why would you answer that question? Because the question is, the question is, the question left. Will you shut up, man? Person? Someone had to say it. Next, it's time to play everyone's favorite game. Do you condemn white supremacists? And the question is... Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists? <laughs> Probably well, boys, not. stand back and stand by. The answer we were looking for was yes. But winning isn't everything. By every measure, we won the debate easily last night. Let's double check that measure. This was the most chaotic presidential debate I've ever seen. What a dark event we have just witnessed. A low point in American political discourse. That was a show. And the show must go on. It's party time as the president goes a rose garden huskow, where the enthusiasm is positively contagious. Mike Lee testing positive. Okay, but that's just one person. Kellyanne Conway testing positive for COVID-19. Tom Tillis tested positive. The Reverend John Jenkins tested positive. Chris Christie is now hospitalized. Bill Stepien. Ronald Daniel. Opix has tested positive for the coronavirus. Oh well, so long as the president is all. This is a Fox News alert. President Trump just tweeted moments ago that he and the first lady have tested positive for the coronavirus. Well, he beats syphilis, he's sure to beat this. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well. I just want to tell you that I'm starting to feel good. Uh, and we have enthusiasm like probably nobody's ever had. Our people that love the job we're doing. Hello, America. I'm doing bigly. great. I feel very, 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 very... He's fine. What a relief. Thanks, Satan. This has been This Week in COVID History. Thanks for watching. Remember, every time you click the subscribe button, one of your enemies gets destroyed.